um, do I need to stand here or can I stand in the middle? Okay. 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 Um, thank you, everyone. So, um, if you have some time before we start, you can try to open this uh, website because this topic I'm going to talk about how we build a fast and SEO-friendly SPA for this website. This is NGMY. Um, NGMY is the um, NG Japan, but in Malaysia, uh, Malaysia version. So it's an Angular Malaysia um, conference. And so this is the last talk of the day. Don't bear with me, don't fall asleep. So I will just finish this on time so that everyone can go home on time. Okay? Okay. All right, so uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Jesslyn Yin. I'm a software architect. I'm a GDE for Angular and Web Technology. And uh, I'm also organizer for NGMY. So if you see later on, if you want to take the photo with this monkey, uh, this is not a monkey, this is orangutan. So this is the mascot for the event. So come find me. All right, so uh, if you open the website, this is the website. You realize that this website has a lot of um, images. Uh, we have images for this page. We have a big hero images, and we have images to display the sponsor icons, and we have images to display um, each of the speaker information. Okay, so this talk, I'm going to talk about the background of this project, and um, next I'm going to talk about how we make the uh, website SEO friendly. Next, I will talk about collaborations because there's three person working together for this project. So we need some tools um, to make our collaboration smoother. And I'm going to talk about performance, how we enhance the performance. Okay, um, can the recording record my face if I stand in the middle or it's here? Okay, never mind. All right, so the backup of this project. <laughs> Everyone like three things, right? Um, so for the conference, we have limited budget. That's why when we build the website, we try to uh, target cost zero to see whether we can build a website and deploy it free. So this is what we do. We achieve that. So far, we never pay anything for the website. So this is what we do. We create a single page application, SPA, because it's easy for deployment. Then we use Firebase hosting to, to uh, host the project because it's free. And we, in this project, we don't use any database because for our data is quite simple. We just have session data, speaker data. So we just use JSON file as our database. And um, this one is we start the project with blank. Normally when we start an Angular project, we are running ng new and then pass in the application name. But in this case, because I know that this year, like um, 2019, we'll have a site. For probably 2020, we'll have another new site. So I want each of the project in its own folder. So what we do is we start the project with blank. This is what we do. We run uh, ng new create application force. It will create a blank workspace. Then we generate an application, pass in the site name. So this is site 2019. So every, everything uh, about this, the source code of this project will be in that folder. Okay. Then during the development time, we do a lot of prototyping. We want to, um, the designer will do some design and we need a quick way to see, to deploy um, easily to see whether the project looks exactly what we want. So we use Netlify. What goes about Netlify that uh, Firebase still doesn't have is you can drag and drop. So for example, after you um, build your project, you can just drag and drop your whole folder to, to Netlify and you get a URL and you can see your project live. Very nice. Next, I'm going to talk about SEO. So why do we want to do SEO? Because Google bought only the, um, we, we want our NGMY site display on Google and uh, we want it to be in the top result. Next, we also want, it, want us to be able to share through social media. And when we do the sharing, we want to be able, for example, we have a food menu. When someone shared it, I want to display a, a unique image for the food menu. And when I share to, for example, Twitter, I want the articles, I want people to see different images and see the description correctly. Slack as well. 
basically all the social media. So these are some of the minimum meta tag that you need to get SEO works because browser only understand um, browser understand meta tag. So this is what we do. We use the um, Angular have a built-in title and meta service. What we do is we have a page service, and then in the constructor we use the title service to set the page title, and we use the meta service to update the meta tag. So I have a I have a function called set page meta. Basically, just passing title, meta description, and images for each of the page. Um, we'll call this page service to set the page meta, to update the meta tag and set the title. Okay, and um, in our website, we need robots.txt. Um, you can have custom configurations uh, in robot.txt to instruct how you want the bots to crawl your page. So in our website, we have dev development versions and we have production version. In development version, we don't want the browser to the Google bot to crawl our website. And in production, we want it to crawl. So the solution for this is we have two um, robot.txt. One we call that robot.txt. The other one we call robots.prod.txt. So we put in different configurations here. The next thing that we, we can do is in AngularJSON, in the architect, just put in, um, in, in the build, just put in the robot.txt as the asset. One more thing is, you need to be able to replace. So for example, if I build a project, ng build dash dash prod, like in production mode, I want, it, I want my project to replace the robot.txt with robot.prod.txt content. The file name stays the same, but the content will be production content. Okay? So um, if you have multiple um, configurations, for example, you have demo environment, you have staging environment, you can create as much environment as you like. When you do the build, you can pass in ng build dash c, dash c is the configuration, and pass in the name of the environment. In our case, it's production, then we pass in production environment. Okay. okay, so SPA and SEO, can we have both together? Because I think if you develop a website, you might encounter some issues wherever you create an SPA, browser cannot understand your image. So what is the problem? Um, during, um, from, for your server, when the server send out the HTML, send out your page, when someone requests um, ng-my.org, this is what we send out. We send out the HTML uh, with the script inside, but you see there's no meta tag and title tag get set. Because only when the clients, which is our browser, run Angular, run our JavaScript script, then it will set the title and meta tag. And most of the crawler only understand the first part, and it stops when the, when the JavaScript append title and meta service. That's why if you are creating a SPA, most likely your website cannot be crawled easily. So there's a solution. We'll be using pre-rendering uh, pre um, to get over this problem. And this is very specific. I'm running pre-rendering during the build time. So what do I mean pre-rendering during the build time? So um, when we run um, building our project, we run ng build then dash prod, correct? And what the build process, the Angular CLI do, it, it will generate index.html, JavaScript, and others file. What, I, what we do is we inject another additional process to open the browser and to browse and save each of the route. So for example, I have slash sessions, slash speaker, slash food, all the route. Imagine that you manually open the page and then save it as HTML which means the page is fully loaded and you have all the title tag already inside your HTML, then we save it. Then we deploy all this file together with um, all the JavaScript file to the server. In this way, um, when, all, when the clients read your file, read your, uh, request your page, it will get the full page of content. 
So this process, open browser and save the route, is called pre-rendering. We can actually automate this process, pre-rendering, using Puppeteer. So what is Puppeteer? Puppeteer is a programmable Chrome browser. Just imagine a browser that you can instruct, write some code, instruct it to run some command. So this is the most simple, simplest form of Puppeteer. You require the Puppeteer, um, you open the browser, and then you open a new page. Next thing, you wait, um, you pass it the URL, and then wait until there's no more network um, connections happen. Then you say that you want to get the HTML content. Then you save, you write to a file. So this process, imagine that you can run, you can loop this process, run for different route. So you can run for a speaker sessions and other route. <coughs> okay, but this process, um, we can extend. How how do we want to um, put that into our NGP process? We can extend Angular CLI Webpack to do so. How do we do that? There's um, there's two libraries that's very useful. One is called Angular Builder Custom Webpack, which allow us to extend the webpack. The other one is actually um, NGX Build Plus, which you can take a look at as well. In this case, I'm using this packet. Then um, another thing that I would like to use is the webpack plugin. It's called Pre-Render SPF plugin. Basically, that's the uh, plugin that runs Puppet here. Okay. Next, what I will do is I create a file called extrawebpack.config.js. You can give it any name. So what I do in the um, code is I, I import the pre-rendered SPF plugin. I define all my route here. Then I say that, um, then I export this module, the plugin. This is the Webpack plugin configurations. I say that, um, please run the pre-rendered SPF plugin. And um, for all the files that you, that you generated, please save it to this directory. And these are the route that I want to run. So then it will run and save all your HTML in the directory that you define. Okay. Next thing, actually you need to um, update Angular JSON to use this custom webpack configuration. But that is very easy to do. Um, if you are interested, you can check out their GitHub repo. They have a very clear instructions for you to do so. The next thing is sitemap. When we want the page to be SEO friendly, sitemap is still necessary. So the way that we um, the way that we generate the sitemap is similar to how we generate the puppeteer. We generate a sitemap.xml and we extend the Angular CLI webpack to do so. So how do we um, how do we extend it? In this case, we just install create file webpack. Um, webpack library. So this plugin will allow us to create and save the file during the uh, webpack build process. So this is the configuration. I import the create file webpack. I set all the route that I want to um, uh, that that I have, and then I pass in here. So you see that there's a content. Content basically is the content for our sitemap.xml. So I have a logic here to generate the XML, which is very easy to, which is very easy to write. Um, this is the, um, if you want to see what's the logic, you can check out this file URL here. The logic is here. Okay, so this is how we generate the sitemap. Wherever we build our project, we'll generate a new sitemap. Okay? Okay, next, you can monitor your site SEO performance with Bing Webmaster Tools or Google Search Console. So you can track whether your SEO performed correctly and whether it's mobile friendly or not. Okay, next, collaboration. So the project is built by three of us, Jenning and Adrian. This is my teammate. So what we want to achieve is we want to be able to work together and independently because we work different time. And Code linting is mandatory. We want to make sure that everyone, when we commit the code um, to our repository, the code is lean and is clear, is clean. 
And we also want to be able to automate the build process, the CI/CD process. So this is the flow during development. Every time when we build a new, uh, when we want to create a new feature, we create a feature run, and we will commit it locally for all the changes. And when we commit the change locally, it will trigger linting. Then we automate um, the linting check with Husky. Husky is um, is a plugin that you can install via npm. So you install Husky. Um, then this is what you can do. You set um, git hook. So this hook is before you commit, please run the linting. So then we make sure that everyone check in the code, which is good in shape. When we complete our feature development, we create a PR. And then when PR get approved, we'll merge it to master branch. And when we merge to master branch, it will trigger a build process. The build process will run the linting again and build um, and run ng build productions. And then if the build success, it will trigger deployment. And this process we automate it using Travis CI. So this is a very uh, sim sim uh, the how we configure the Travis CI. It's very easy to use, and the keyword is it's free for public project. So this is still a free project. Okay. Okay. And you can set it. Uh, in our case, we just set it to run in master branch, but you can set it to run in any branch. If you want, uh, you have more more than one branch, you can set it to run. And in this case, because we are using Firebase to host for hosting, so we I need to install Firebase tools in order for me to deploy all my code to Firebase. Okay. So next, performance. Performance is very important. So I think everyone has the experience of browsing slow website. So you either feel like, ah, oh, because you really want to do something and it stops you to do something, or you just go away. Don't use the website. Okay. So the goals of performance is to create a pleasant browsing experience for everyone. And page speed also matters for your SEO page ranking. If your page speed is low, then it will affect your mobile ranking to probably lower um, in the uh, Google search. This is, uh, this is a research done uh, by HTTP Archive. This is the general page, page, page weight for mobile website. You can see that image is the first cause of page weight. Then JavaScript costs also a lot of weight. Font, CSS, and HTML is the others. Um, this is the tools that I use to measure the page performance. Anyone use Lighthouse here? Good. Um, so in this case, I'm using Lighthouse and PagePiece inside to measure my page performance. Of course, because I'm doing this talk, so I make sure that my um, application is actually good in performance. So this is the uh, mobile performance of NGMI website. That is the desktop performance, 100%. Okay? Can you give a clap? Okay. Um, so below here, there's also another tool called web page test, which you can use. Okay, so I'm going to break the performance section down. We'll first talk about images because it costs the most weight. Then we talk about fonts, Angular and JavaScript, CSS, and then others. Okay, for images, imagine that this is your data plan. You have a data plan which only have 2 GB. I don't, I don't know in Japan, but in Malaysia, our data plan is expensive. Imagine that just browse through any environment page and I download 5 MB of the image, and then you, look, you go again and then I download the, the data again. You probably don't want to go to my web page anymore. Okay? Now, this is a quiz, this is a guess. So this is one part of um, um, NGMI website, we have articles. And we have this tiny pattern, the white, the white icon, which is SVG. Can you guess how big is this one icon, SVG? How many KB or how many MB? Hmm, I will just ask someone. How many? Uh, 10. 10 KB. You? 50 KB. 50 KB. Oh, okay. 
Oh. Mm. Almost. This is 32 KB. Imagine there's only one icon, one small icon is 32 KB. So this is, and it's actually not your main content. Like if I remove this line, for you it will be fine because you can still read the word. So why is this happen? Because sometimes in SVG, you have a lot of metadata. You have like all the metadata to talk about who creating this and uh, the additional information that is not necessary for display. So what you can do is you can optimize the SVG with this SVG, oh my god. The name is very good, oh my god. Yeah, and um, you, can, you can open the website and just drag the file to optimize it. Or you can use NPM to automate this project. You can install the NPM wherever in your projects you have SVG uh, set in the folder, just run the process again. You'll be surprised. Because I only found out this um, very recently after we deployed the website for quite some time. Okay, then we are able to shave 32 KB to 2 KB, which is very good. Next thing is about WebP. Uh, WebP is a file format, it's like PNG, but it's smaller. Why do I say it's like PNG? Because it supports. Um, two minutes left? Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Because it, you can, it supports transparency. So WebP uh, images is 25 to 35 percent smaller or uh, smaller than JPG and PNG with the same quality. So WebP is already arrived in um, Chrome, um, Edge, and uh, Fire, Fire, Firefox will, will implement it uh, soon. But it's not arrived in Safari. It's okay because these three browser account for 78 percent of global user. Okay. So let me show you an example. If the image is in PNG format, this data rate, this, this port is 119 KB. But when I convert it to WebP, same quality is only 28 KB. And this foot here is the same. It's like four times uh, smaller than the size. Okay. But in our, in, our, we, in our web page, we want to support both formats because they are still user browsing from Safari browser. So what we can do, we can use picture tag. If you use picture tag, you can set that the source equal to the WebP format and you set that the type is the WebP format. And then you set the PNG format as well for the IMG. So what this means is that um, if the browser support WebP, it will load the first image. Then it will stop. If the browser doesn't support WebP, it will load the second. Okay, so it, by this way, you can support both WebP and all the browsers. What you need is generate two format of the images. Next thing is about image compression. So there's two types of compressions, looseless and loosey. Um, in generally, um, our web page should load uh, looseless images because it's very good in the quality. But loosey format actually gives you a uh, good in performance. But what you see is you see some pixelated. So the tricky point is, where, what are the quality you should set for your images? Is it zero quality or 100% quality? Okay, so this is the general guidance. For most of the image, if you reduce the quality to 80% or 85%, the file size can be reduced to 30 to 40%. Okay, and it has minimal impact, effect on your images. <laughs> so you can test it out 80%. Um, this is an example. So if I have the full um, image for the background image is 495 KB. But if I shift it down to 80% of the quality, the size is 180 KB, which is much smaller. And you don't really see the differences because it's also not a very important uh, element in our web page. So it's okay that we have a lower, um, a lower quality. Okay, next responsive image. Um, Image in desktop needs, of course, our desktop is bigger, right? So um, the image also is bigger. So normally, web desktop image is two to four times larger than mobile. So this is an example. In, uh, in desktop, this is 28 KB. In, uh, in the mobile, I serve you with a smaller file size and the smaller image, the smaller pixel, which is 12 KB. This is how you can do it. You can use the media tag to actually set uh, uh, what are the size of the image uh, that you want to load for which screen size. There's a lot of uh, different way that you can set the um, differential loading for, uh, for images. 
This is one of the way. If you want to find out more, uh, you can read. Uh, Mozilla have a very good articles uh, on this. Okay, so if you want to uh, resize your image, compress or change the format of your images, you can go to this website, squash.app. It's developed by uh, the Chrome development team. Um, if you don't like like manually drag and drop to do that, you can also go. To, you can also install npm package image me sharp or gym to actually do the same thing. Okay. So in summary, a performance image is an image with good uh, appropriate format, WebP, compressions, and display size. Okay. Font. So for font, um, by default, if a font is not loaded, I think many of us use a uh, Google font. Um, the browser will hide the text up to three seconds, and for Safari, it hides in, in finite. So the user might see a flash of invisible. You don't see the text, and when the font loaded, you just show up the, the, um, the text. This is not a very good experience. So what you can do is you use this CSS uh, property called font display swap. So first, you display um, the text with probably just system font like area. Then when the um, then when the image is loaded, it will use the uh, format that you set. What even better is if you are using Google Font, you can just pass in additional uh, property called Display Swap to swap the format. And then you can also limit the weight of your Google Font. Okay. Then um, if you are running Lighthouse, you will see this eliminate eliminate render blocking above fold. You will see this uh, error, this, this warning when you are running a uh, lighthouse. So what you can do is instead of import the font, uh, Google font in your head, you import it after your, body, uh, your font body is loaded. Then you get rid of the uh, format. And then for the icons, um, you can shift down the icon. So for example, if I think many of us use font awesome, but you don't use all the icons in font awesome. So what you can do is you use these two icon mode um, to just pull all the icon that you need. So in this case, I only use 13 icon in my project, so it's 3.7 KB. And then uh, Angular and TypeScript. Um, so for lazy loading, um, it's very highly recommended that you implement lazy loading in your project. So this is how you can implement lazy loading in um, Angular version 8. Okay. Then you also use on push strategy if you can enable the on push strategy, so it will um, reduce your uh, change detection circle. So this is how you can use that. <coughs> also, you can defer the JavaScript. So for example, um, the normal the normal execution is when you have when your HTML is passing, the passing will pause when your JavaScript is downloaded, downloading, and then when the JavaScript is downloaded then it will execute it, then only continue your HTML parsing process. If you have deferred, it will complete the HTML parsing first, while it download the script, and then it's execute it later. Okay? So what you can defer? You can defer Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. In this way, your HTML parsing is much faster. And for CSS, it's very easy, you just minimize the global CSS, just import what you need for your component and move all your CSS into your component. Okay, so these are some general advice. Um, just cache all the static site asset. So what you can do is in your server, so in this case, because I'm using Firebase, this is how I can set the headers. Um, cache it as long as possible, because for this JS, CSS, and JPEG, I have a hash um, I have a hash code behind, so uh, it will be downloaded if I redeploy it. So it's okay for you to cache as long as possible. And these are some of the performance optimization that we as an Angular uh, developer already get for free. Because when you build your ng build with production, minification and amplification already done for you, and you have AOT enabled by default, and you, if you are using Firebase or any other server-side um, tools, uh, hosting tools, most of them support gzip, you just need to enable that. Then uh, differential loading is also support by Angular version 8, which um, you serve um, smaller file size for uh, the new browser, and in the old browser you, 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 need to give, uh, you need to serve the polyfill, but the new browser will get like a smaller file size. Okay, 
So with all the things that I have said and done in the website, this is the performance that we get. So for the um, for the first for the for the for the main page, um, it's like six five one KB. It's not very good. Like probably can be smaller, but I think it's pretty good. And in mobile, it's only six four nine KB. Okay. Okay. So that's all. Arigatou gozaimasu. So this is the